Hello and welcome to our instructional series of videos. In this installment, we're going to show you how to replace the battery in a late 2018-2019 13-inch MacBook Air. This installation does have the potential for damaging your MacBook Air if you aren't careful, so be sure to both read all the information included with your kit and watch this video in its entirety before proceeding. We've gathered all our materials and are working on a soft, static-free work surface. We're now ready to begin. Before we go opening up the MacBook Pro, we first want to temporarily disable the auto boot function. We'll re-enable it later when we're done. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram auto boot equals percent zero zero. Then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Go ahead and type that in. Note that your cursor won't move as you type in the password. Once you've entered that command, you can now shut the MacBook Pro down and close it. The first thing we'll need to do is remove the bottom cover. There are 10 total pentalobe screws that we need to remove. Start with the two center ones along the hinge edge as they're the longest. Then, remove the two corner screws on the hinge edge as they're slightly shorter than the ones that you just removed. Finally, you can remove the remaining six screws, which are shorter still and all the same size. You can then use the suction cup to lift the bottom cover up and off. The next thing to do is disconnect the battery cable. To do this, lift up on the tape covering the connection, then use your nylon tool to push the connector horizontally out of its socket. Now we need to remove the speakers. Start with disconnecting the speaker cables by gently lifting up on the cables next to the socket on each side. Next, we need to remove the adhesive strips near the bottom of the speaker assemblies. To remove them, simply peel back the tab near the bottom of the speaker, then slowly but firmly pull straight back until all of the adhesive pops free. If the tab or adhesive snaps, you should be able to just grab what's left and continue pulling. Then, do the same on the other side. There is still a small bit of adhesive still on the speaker assembly near the magnet, but you should be able to lift the speaker assembly free of the chassis on each side. Next to the power connector we disconnected earlier, carefully lift up the locking flap to the fan cable zip connector, then use the tab to slide it out of its socket. Next, lift the locking flap on the soundboard cable's connector the same way as before. And slide the cable from its socket. Next, remove these two Torx T3 screws holding the plate over the port connector. Remove the plate, then gently lift up on the connector to detach it. Now we'll do the same thing for the trackpad connector. Remove the two Torx T3 screws,
and then remove the cover plate. We'll then want to lift the connector loose, but don't peel it back as this portion of the cable is connected underneath. Next, remove these five Torx T4 screws. The two nearest the power connector are slightly shorter than the others, so be sure to keep them separate. The last screw to remove is the large Torx T4 screw next to the trackpad connector. You should now be able to rotate the logic board up so we can access the second trackpad connector underneath it. Peel the tab back slightly and unlatch the lever of the ZIF connector. Then, use the flat edge of your nylon pry tool to carefully help peel the trackpad cable from the chassis. You should then be able to slide the cable out from its socket. Continue carefully peeling the trackpad cable back off the center battery cell. Next, remove these four Torx T3 screws holding the battery to the chassis. Finally, we need to remove the three adhesive strips under each of the side cells. Peel up each tab then slowly but firmly pull them straight out. Then do the same on the other side. You should now be able to lift the battery up and out of the MacBook Air. To install the new battery, we'll first need to place the new adhesive strips using the sheet of shorter ones provided in your kit. We'll be placing six strips, three on each side, on the raised areas in the chassis. Peel each strip from the sheet and place it so the black tab hangs over the end of the raised area the strip is on. You can then remove the red backing from the adhesive strips. You can now set the battery into place, taking care that the holes in the edge tabs line up with the corresponding holes in the chassis. You can then secure it with its four Torx T3 screws. Fold the trackpad cable back over the center cell of the battery. There should be enough residual adhesive to allow it to stick. Next, slide the lower trackpad cable all the way back into its socket.
and lock it by flipping the socket lever back into the horizontal position. You can then press the ribbon cable down so it sits flush against the chassis. You can now set the logic board back into place, taking care not to trap any loose cables underneath. After double checking to make sure the mounting holes are lined up, replace the large Torx T4 screw next to the trackpad connector. Next, replace the three screws on the right half using the slightly longer T4 screws. Then, use the two shortest logic board screws on the left. Reattach the trackpad cable by aligning the connectors and pushing them together. Then, replace the metal cover and secure it with its two Torx T3 screws. Then, reattach the port connector in the same way. Press the connectors together, replace the cover, and secure it with its T3 screws. You can now slide the soundboard cable back into its socket and lock it into place by moving the lever back into its horizontal position. Then, do the same with the fan cable next to it. Next, we'll use the longer adhesive strips for the speaker assemblies. Place a strip on each side along the center of the gap between the battery cells and the edge of the chassis and back far enough that the black tab sits against the outside of the indentation. Then, peel off the red backing. Before replacing the speaker assemblies, you can remove the small adhesive strips next to the magnet on each one. Simply pull on the small tab near the top of each strip. You can now set each speaker into place, making sure the notch in the assembly goes around the raised post in the chassis. Finally, push the speaker connectors back into their sockets. The last thing to reconnect is the power cable. Slide it horizontally into its socket until it's fully seated. Then, place the adhesive tab back over the connection, and we're ready to close up. Set the cover back into place, making sure it sits flush.
and push down in the center to re-engage the clips on the underside. The longest pentalobe screws go in the two center holes on the hinge edge. The next longest go in the corners on the hinge edge. Finally, replace the remaining six screws, which are all the same size. Now that the battery's been installed, we need to calibrate the power system. First, plug in the USB-C charger and let the battery charge up to 100%. Once it's reached 100%, keep it charging for at least another two hours. However, you can use your computer during this time rather than leaving it off. After that, we'll need to discharge the battery. First, in the Energy Saver Preference pane, make sure all the sliders are set to the right and any power saving measures, like sleeping the hard drive, are turned off. Do this for both the power adapter and the battery settings. Once you've done that, disconnect the power cable and let the battery discharge completely until the computer shuts down. Continue using it even through the low battery warning. Don't do anything particularly heavy. Steady and even usage will result in better power system calibration. Leave it shut down for at least 5 hours to ensure the battery is completely drained. Then, fully charge the computer back up to 100% without unplugging. Once the battery is charged back up, the power management system is properly calibrated. You can now set your energy saver settings back to normal and use your computer as you normally would. All that's left to do is re-enable boot on open. To do this, launch terminal and enter sudo nvram autoboot equals percent zero three, then hit return. You'll be asked for your password. Enter that and hit return. Boot on Open is now reactivated and your MacBook Pro is ready to use.